Hey, what's going on guys? Tom here and today we are going to edit this floating donut knife picture that I previously shot and did a tutorial on how to shoot floating product photography. Um, I actually recorded this video a couple months back, but the QuickTime screen recordings were corrupt and basically it was unusable. So I'm going to redo it now, but I'm going to use that to my advantage since it is a few months later. You know, normally you'd kind of be a little confused about why you shot certain plates for things, but I'm going to explain exactly why I name my files the way I do for this specific reason. So let's hop into the computer and we'll take it from there. Okay, so we are in Capture One 20 right now. I do not like Lightroom for tethering into it. I'm pretty much using Capture One for, I don't know, over 10 years now. It's the industry standard, it just works for me. So if you do not use Capture One, it's all good. I'm just gonna show you, you know, why I named the files the way I did, and then we're gonna take them into Photoshop and we're gonna edit from there. So don't get scared by Capture One. So let's start here. You can see on the bottom I have underscore main at the end of the file. And basically my whole filing naming convention here is pretty simple. So the first part is always gonna be the date. It's gonna be the year, the month, the day, and then Notorious EDC, that's my pocket knife Instagram. So I basically would make that the client, like if it was for whatever brand that would be there. And then after that would be the more specific project. But in this case, it's Notorious EDC for my Instagram and then Dessert Warrior because that's the name of the knife. That's the shot count, um, excuse me, that's the, uh, yeah, the, the shot counter. And at the end, I just wrote main because this is gonna be our main exposure. So if we go through the files here, you can see this one says left light demo and this one says right light demo. And that's basically because I wanted to show you guys what each of the lights were doing. So then I also have something for the blade edge, another option for the blade edge, just the sprinkles on the surface, raining sprinkles, raining sprinkles, raining sprinkles, some more, and wow, that one, we went crazy there. <laughs> it feels like such a long time ago, because it was. Um, all right, and then that's the clean background plate. Then we have the plate super sharp in focus here, if this will load for us. Come on, there we go. And. That's basically everything. So what I did was I processed all those out as TIFFs and now we can quit this out and we can bring this into, that's my old stuff from last time. We can bring this into Photoshop. So what we're going to do is once we bring a file in, I like to mark it as green so I know that it's actually being, you know, being used so I don't get confused when there's like all these sprinkle plates and I'm like, which sprinkle plate was it? So next thing we're gonna do is we are going to copy by hitting Command J, our background layer, and that will be our uh, retouch layer. You never wanna retouch the actual image because that's destructive editing. So you can't really undo it. So if we make a copy of this layer, that is called non-destructive editing. And if you go too crazy with it and you're like, oh, this is, I've gone too far. You can always just kind of either get rid of it or you can make a mask and just remove part of it. It's just a safe way to keep all of your data in the image safe. You know what I mean? All right, so let's see. Next thing we need to do is, I think we need to add a sprinkles on the surface here. So let's bring that in because we know we want sprinkles on the surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press V and then shift, click, drag, so it ends up dragging uh, centered on the frame there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write 112 sprinkles surface. It's kind of hard to type with this keyboard turned. There we go. So that way I know exactly what this layer is and I can refer back here if I need to. We also want to get the background plate in there so we just have a nice clean base to work off of because what we're going to do is we're going to clip out all the items all the floating stuff and we're going to be able to move everything around freely. That way if we want to enlarge the knife or make the donut smaller. Basically you have more freedom and flexibility that way. 
So we're gonna call this background clean. And at this point, it's already, we've already passed the point of when we should have saved this, but I just like to constantly save. I know there's probably uh, 20 auto save features on Photoshop now, but it's just the right thing to do. So we're gonna do main and then save that as a Photoshop file. Cool. All right, so that's saved and I'm gonna make this green. So now we have four layers, but these two are the same. Um, we can turn that one off since we're not really needing that. All right, so we can also throw the background under the sprinkles clean, or sorry, the sprinkles surface. Um, at this point, let's just make sure this is lined up. Yeah, it's lined up pretty good. You can see the surface is bouncing just a tiny bit, but that's because it is foam core and you know, it's not real marble. So that's a sticker, a marble sticker, which I will link in the description below. Um, so sprinkle surface. So what we wanna do is, I wanna mask the rest of this picture out. Actually, we could just do it like so. So we're gonna mask this out. So we just have the sprinkles on the surface and let's go with this brush. Oops. And we'll just go across here. Cool. So that's good. So now we have a clean background with our sprinkle surface. And actually, another thing I wanna do before we get too far in is I don't love that separation there. So I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna clean that up. This is the very glamorous side <laughs> of product photography. By the way, I hate retouching more than more than anything maybe. So I don't actually do, um, I don't do most of my retouching. I mean, if it's a personal project, of course, I'll do it myself, but um, I'll get back to this little guy in a second. If it's a personal project, I'll do it myself because I usually don't want to spend the cash, but man, if it is a work project, that stuff is getting uh, sent out to my team of awesome retouchers because it is very time consuming. And if you can outsource something, you should. But that is for a whole nother video. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's way better on the background. Oops, sorry. But yeah, you get the idea there. Cool, so that's nice for that. And actually what I'll do is I'm going to also add a mask here. Oops, wrong tool. Add this mask here so we can get that nice closer. There we go. No gap there. All right, and then also I want to remove this highlight. I'm using the patch tool. Boom, that's gone. Another one up here. Mm, that one's not so offensive. Yeah, we'll leave that. All right, cool, save that. And then let's, um, let's move this shot here above and we're not actually going to use this file um, we are going to clip everything out and have all of our items individually floating so first thing we want to do is start with this knife i'm gonna zoom in and i'm going to make a path around it i usually like to do clipping or making paths at around 200 percent but this is actually a pretty uh, pretty easy little curve here, so we don't have to go too crazy, but once we get into the more detailed areas, I will definitely get all up in there. Um, like here is a good example. So I'll show you guys a little bit of this, and then I'll speed it up so you don't um, get bored to tears. But this is kind of how I like to do my paths. Uh, so I think 
I don't even really need to explain. You can kind of just see what I'm doing, but maybe I can explain why. Um, so paths should be natural looking. You don't want it to look clipped out, even though it obviously is. So in my experience, going at the tops of things like I've done here is just a little easier and faster. And I could give you a whole tutorial on paths, but I'm sure there's some really, really good ones on YouTube. And I just pray that you look those up instead of asking me to make one because it's so boring. But if you can make these, it's really helpful and it can really, um, it can really help you do some amazing things with your photos that, you know, just takes everything to a whole nother level when you can use this as a way to select things and, um, you know, just gives you a lot of creative freedom. So let's go around here. And keep in mind the back of this knife is pretty blurry. So I'm going to feather this out anyway. So this, um, this path, it doesn't even really need to be super, super, um, specific back here, but, um, we will get into that later. So now as we get back to the front of the knife, you can see the focus starting to come back and That's when we need to start paying attention to little details. Obviously you should pay attention all the way around, but I'm just saying it's not as stressful when it's blurred soft edges. My mouse and keyboard are in a little bit of strange, uh, unusual and unused um, positions here. <laughs> so I'm just not going at my usual speed and accuracy levels. So I apologize, but I'm just doing the best I can, guys. What's going on here? Let me back up, sorry. There we go. Just trying to keep everything looking fluid and not having any like sharp parts or like weirdness. We don't want weirdness. Yeah, that's the whole thing. So we're going to go into paths and what you want to do now is very important. Double click on it to give it a name. It doesn't even have to be knife, but let's just call it that for posterity and then command S. Let's just always save again. I know there's an auto save, but I'm just going to command S my life away. Um, all right. So before we go crazy here, let's actually retouch that. Um, that little schmutz off and whatever else is going on on this knife. We got a little dust there. Didn't catch that when I was shooting it because I was doing a, a tutorial for you guys and my head was in 20 different places. However, it's an easy retouch. It's all good. That's not the tool I want. So now I'm going to go to, I'm going to press J until I get to this little patch tool here and it's a spot excuse me, it is the spot healing brush tool. That's what we want. So basically I like to mess with this until we get it right. And that was pretty good on the first try. So I really like this brush. I always use it with soft edges. And this is one of those things where I could tell you how to do it till my face is blue. It's a whole bunch of dust in there. That's all good. We're going to let that rock. Um, I could tell you how to use this tool till my face turns blue, but it's one of those things where if you just mess with it a little bit, you're going to figure it out in no time and you figure out it's like weird little nuances and all that. But, um, yeah, it's just like anything else with Photoshop. The more you dig in, the better off you're going to be. So now we want to get blade edge. So let's drag that puppy in and <clears throat> to keep file size down, because again, this is a 50 megapixel big boy <laughs> 5DSR. So we don't even need the whole file because we just know that we need this edge. So we can literally just take that instead of the entire layer and then 
go to the move tool, shift, click, drag, and then boom, it's gonna be right on there. But as you can see, um, there's that, you know, that box that we dragged in there. We don't want that. We just need the edge. So blade edge is what we're gonna name it. We're gonna go down here at a mask. We're going to fill the whole thing. Ooh, actually, before we do that, we need to make sure the registration is good, which it is not yet. Um, you can see that it doesn't line up exactly. So I made the blade edge layer 50% opacity, and now I'm gonna nudge until it's in the right spot. And that feels pretty good. So now I'm gonna go back to 100 and click on and off. It's a little high, so I'm gonna tap it down once. And that looks perfect. So now I'm gonna fill the mask and I'm going to paint very delicately and carefully the edge of this knife back in so it doesn't have that yucky yellow cast to it. So we're gonna just go a little bit further than we should with this and then we're gonna back it out and it's gonna be okay. Do not panic. I know this looks insane. Sometimes it's the fastest way is a little rough around the edges, literally. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to the black brush and we're gonna mask whatever we don't want to be showing, which is all this extra stuff on the sides. And again, this is just clicking around figuring out what works, a wild world full of excitement. <laughs> but you know what? This is what you gotta do to get the cool pictures. And it is what it is, my friends. All right, so then that is the top part and now we're gonna get the bottom edge. It's gonna look really nice when we're done. That's all that matters. All right. So that looks good. So now we have our blade edge. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna save that out. And now what we're gonna do is I'm going to I turn this top layer off of the sprinkle surface. So right now, the blade and the edge are two separate layers. So if I took the path that I made around this knife and I turn this into its own layer, you're not gonna have that edge because it's just gonna grab the layer that I'm on, which would be this one. So what I wanna do is I want to combine these two by hitting Command, Option, Shift, and E. And now that blade edge is just baked into that layer. So now I can hit command click on that path. And at this juncture, I would like to hit select. And I realize that I have that hidden up top because I didn't want you guys to see me take four hours working on this file. But you wanna hit select, modify, and feather. My hotkey is set to shift F6. Um, so at this point, I would do a 0.5 feather because I want to keep it um, a little bit sharper. But we're going to, like I said, if we need to blur it out, we will um, on the back end of that knife. So now we're going to hit Command J to make a new layer. And boom, what do we have here? We have our floating knife. So we can say floating knife. Good. So now... What do you think about that? We got, we got this floating knife. So now we can really move it around anywhere we want to. We can rotate it. Like we can do a lot of stuff now. This is where it gets good. But we're gonna leave it exactly where it was because I shot it that way for a reason. And now we're going to make, oops. Let me go back. Okay, good. Now we're gonna go around our donuts. Um, I believe I have another layer to brighten the inside of that donut up. Let me check that out now. Ah, it's in the 
sprinkle surface layer. Yes, it is. All right. So actually what I'll do is I'll just use the donuts from this layer because mm, it looks a little too bright, but I'll just tone it down a little bit. All right. All right. So now we want to silo these, uh, these donuts out. So let's get into that. I think I'm actually going to use this sprinkles surface layer. So let me get rid of this layer mask so we can just deal with that a little bit easier. Yeah. I just, I like the way the, uh, the donut looks without the knife blocking the light on it. And like I said, it's been a few months since I shot this. I forgot what layer was for what, but you know, thankfully <laughs> we can just look at it and just say, you know what, this looks better. So actually both donuts look better without the knife in the way. So now I'm going to make a path around each of the donuts and I'm going to make sure we're not clicked on this knife one, which we're not. And we are on the correct layer, which doesn't matter right now, but okay. So now we're going to go around this donut. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. So since this is, you know, more organic of a shape, it's not like the, the knife where it was just like a piece of metal that's kind of flat and then, you know, round in one part, this is like sprinkles and there's dough ripped and all this stuff. It's good. And it's bad because you can, get away with making some mistakes here and there, but it's also like way more time consuming because you have all these little details to consider. Um, and right now I'm at a hundred percent. I'm going to zoom into 200 so I can really get around this stuff a little bit better. And you know, again, this is, uh, this one is a little bit soft on the back as well. So I think in this case, we will also blur the back out, but again, we'll get to that later. That is uh, a little more of an advanced maneuver. And like anything with Photoshop, like I mentioned before, practice makes perfect. This is not something that I figured out the first time. It took me many years to, you know, to get good at it. And more importantly, the whole point of learning Photoshop is to know what you need to shoot for to achieve the image that you're trying to capture or create. So what do I mean by that? So the point is when you go to shoot this floating donut knife, you need to know, well, where do I need to put the clamp to hold the knife so that I can Photoshop it out and it's going to look realistic. That's just as important as lighting it well, because if you put that clamp on the wrong side, you can't invent the knife. Like you can't create it in Photoshop. I mean, you probably could to an extent, but obviously not as easily as just shooting it the right way. So that's kind of the whole point of Photoshop is to be another tool in your toolkit to help you create images. Um, all right. That wasn't what I wanted to do. There we go. So as you can see, I've got this fork holding the donut up, which, you know, that did the trick. So, Again, if you didn't see that video, give it a look after this or before this, whatever order you want to do. I don't want to be one of those people on YouTube telling you how to live your life. You could look at it. You could skip it. It doesn't really matter to me. I just want you guys to, uh, to learn some Photoshop stuff and just have a good time. So <laughs> that's just me being honest. So let's see. So now we're cruising around here and now we have the unfrosted unsprinkled side. Thank God. And we can get around that pretty quickly. And we are almost back to the ripped part. I don't remember how many of these I ate. I think I had like two and a half that day. And you know what? I'd do it again. I sure would. And please, please, please let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Um, I would love some suggestions. I'm just kind of like, I really want to do this still life stuff on YouTube. I don't see many people doing it. So, and it's something that I do for a living. So to me, it's, um, you know, it's my everyday thing. So I really enjoy still life. I want to share the, uh, the wild world of still life with you guys. 
and you know it can be really fun like this is a really fun picture and I really enjoyed the outcome of it and all that so I think you can make a lot of really cool stuff with this all right so that looks pretty good hands getting cramped guys that was a long long path there um all right so i'm gonna save that as right underscore donut and you know what that's how i like to spell donut because it's a little faster so let's go and click uh command click on that and now we are on that layer so we want to hit oh sorry actually we want to um we want to feather that out and in this one, I'm going to go with a one pixel feather. We'll see how that works out for us. Command J puts it on its own layer. And we're going to name that layer right donut. So now if we get rid of all this other stuff, we have our two floating items already. Um, I can tell you right now, this is way too bright for me. So I'm just going to get on in there and I'm going to add some curves and I'm going to uh, clip that down to the layer, which means it will only affect the layer it is attached to. You can see with this little arrow right here. So what I want to do is I want to just darken that a bit, nothing crazy. And then I'm going to fill the mask with the brush. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to brush in with a nice soft brush. Just bring that in a little bit and bring that in a little bit because we don't want it to overpower the knife, which is looking a little dark and we're going to brighten him up too. Um, so yeah, that feels better. So now we got to do the left donut. <laughs> it never ends. All right. So now we're going to get in there again and this time I'm just going to uh, blow through it and speed this up so you guys don't have to listen to me ramble. All right, man, look at all those, look at all those points. That's, uh, that's horrific. That's not the ideal way, but it is what it is. Left donut. And we are going to command J. Whoops, sorry, I forgot to click. Command click on that. Now we're gonna um, feather it, pixel, command J, put it on its own layer, left donut. All right, we're in pretty good shape here. Let's kind of see where we're at. We have our left donut. Where is it? Here we go. We have our left donut. We have our right donut. We have sprinkles on the surface. Um, I need to add that mask back for the background. So basically, I'm going to paint out right across there. And then I'm going to mask this whole situation. And we're good. So now that layer is essentially, um, it's just the surface, as you can see there. So when I click on background clean, that pops the, the wall back on there. And one of the reasons why I shot that was because I wanted to get a plate for this area to not have crazy reflections. Um, you can't see them, but over there are my wire shelving and they were kind of like reflecting light in there or whatever. So anyway, it's always good to get a background plate. It's one of the most important things that we do in still life in case someone needs to move something slightly, enlarge it, add something out of shadow uh, or remove a shadow. Background plate is like one of the biggest things. First things first, let's make this knife look nice and bright. So we're gonna add a curves layer and I'm gonna clip to the layer with, as you can see with that little right 
arrow right there, little right angle arrow. So I'm gonna just kind of go a little nuts with it and then walk it back. So I don't even think that's nuts actually. Yeah, it's kind of, wow, you could just see how flat and dead it looks here. And then when you add that pop of contrast, I yeah, I did go a little too crazy with it. So let's walk it back a little bit. Not too much though, because we do want it to pop more than the donut. Um, and we'll add a little something something to the donuts as well. But that looks awesome. The blue is nice and bright. The pink is nice and bright. It just looks alive. This is like a fun, silly picture. So, you know, you want it to be colorful and you want it to jump out at you like that. So that's cool. And then I'm going to, I'm actually going to option click drag above the donut. And right now it's applied to everything. So we're going to clip it down to that layer and it brings that to life too, but it's a little bit too alive. So we're going to dial the opacity down to 50 and you know what? That looks pretty great. So I'm going to also option click drag above the right donut. Oops. Not gonna do that. Let me try that again. Option, click, drag, right there, good. So that again is a little bit too bright on those parts that we chilled out. So I might actually make that little chill out that we did a little bit darker. And it's starting to look a little orange. So I'm gonna take the blending mode and turn it to luminosity and see how we like that. So before, and then after, and it looks kind of gray, huh? Yeah, I don't love that. Let's go back to normal. And then what we'll do is we'll just add a little bit of blue and we'll remove some red just to kill a little bit of that warmth. And let's see if that helped. Yeah, it chilled it out quite a bit. All right, great. So now I'm gonna save it again, which I should have been doing every step of the way. And I'm really happy with where this picture is going now. I think the knife looks awesome. Um, what's this group here? Hmm, I don't even know why I made that group. My bad. Ignore that, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, the knife's looking good. The donuts are popping. We're in good shape, guys. We're in good shape. Let's see now. Oh, we're not in good shape. I need to mask the donut out down here. So if we move that, then we, we won't even see this little guy down here. Good. Cool. So now our donut can move about, free to move about the cabin. Save that. And now we're going to start adding sprinkles. But before we do that, I want to make a fake frame of the crop, right? So this is going to be four by five for the gram. So I'm going to crop it as I see fit here. And that's kind of actually exactly where I want it. So I'm going to leave it alone. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag down some grid lines, which will look like they're disappearing. But when we get rid of this crop, they will be there. Very weird thing that Photoshop does. It is what it is. So we get rid of it. We press um, command semicolon and there they are. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add a blank layer. I'm going to take the marquee tool and I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit shift command I to invert my selection. And then I'm going to press command delete to fill it with white. And then we're going to get rid of those lines. And now I'm going to call this the frame because it's the fake frame. It's just for my visual reference of where I want to put the sprinkles, because if I didn't have this frame, I could go all over the place and I would be doing extra work when I know I don't need to go above a certain place and waste time with sprinkles. So the fake frame, let's just call it the fake frame, the fake frame, oh, man. I'm just having trouble with this keyboard today. <laughs> All right, so the fake frame is up and wow, what a treat. And it actually will show you what it's gonna look like on Instagram with this white background. I usually work with a white background in Capture One, but when I retouch, for the most part, I don't do it because it's just too bright. But it's a good trick because now you can see, wow, that tile doesn't look super white. 
but I also know if I make it brighter, I'm going to start to lose all these like grout lines or whatever and the dimension of it. So anyway, we have the fake frame up. Now we want to actually want to go into this knife and I want to paint some of this out because you can see that it's a little bit too dark and it looks weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask. And this is just stuff that you're gonna see as you go, and that's what retouching is all about. You just gotta make some changes, make adjustments on the fly. I'm gonna actually make this brush a little bit harder, edges. I'm happy with that. Good, so now I'm gonna save it again. Now it's time for the raining sprinkles. Let's see what we got. Raining sprinkles left, so let's go on there. Drag that in. And once again, I'm only taking this piece here because we don't need the whole file bulking up our whole situation. And I need to put this above the fake frame layer and get rid of that. Press F, Command S, and then left spring. So now we have some nice motion blur sprinkles and what I want to do is I want to add a mask and basically we're going to Quentin Tarantino this, we're going to do this reverse. So what I want to do is I want to get at 100% and make a little bit of a softer brush, maybe not all the way, and I'm going to just paint these out. So essentially we're going to paint them all out and then we're going to reverse we're gonna invert, excuse me, the mask, and they will all show up magically. A little bit of a process with sprinkles, but you know what? Why not choose the most annoying picture to do a tutorial on? <laughs> and here you can see all the crazy reflections from the wire shelving that I was talking about earlier. So now I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked on this mask. I'm gonna hit Command I to invert it. And bada bing, bada boom, there she is. Just a bunch of sprinkles. Um, I'm not mad at it. So it is a little bit dark over here. I think what happened was when I was shooting super fast, the light wasn't recycling fast enough. So guess what? We're gonna add a curves layer and we're going to clip it to that layer. As you can see, this is something I use all the time. And we're just gently going to bring it up. And it is too bright up there. Man, oh man. Um, all right, no big deal. So we can add a gradient. And we'll just do a little bit of this. And that actually looks way better. Good. Cool. And we can also just paint in, like I see around this white one, little situation there. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. And we can also clean up this orange one. How do you guys feel about this orange one being in front of the blade? Do we like it? Is it too weird? Do we hate it? Does it make it look realistic? I'll tell you what I don't like is this green one here. It's a little too close for me, so let's get rid of that. That's better. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know what? Let's get rid of that orange one. It's a little distracting. All right, so I'm happy with that. Saving that out. All right, so now it's time for the right sprinkles. We're just making big moves, guys boss moves. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. Marquee tool, grab the right side, and I'll just go all the way down. So we got some dancing on the surface here. Hit F two times to cycle through that. And where are we? Drag up here. Come on, release clipping mask. This happens all the time when you're not in the right layer. And again, that. And again, command S, you know, the drill at this point, right? Um, all right. So we want to add a mask 
and we're gonna do the same thing. So once again, I'm going to speed through this. There are quite a few sprinkles on this side. This is gonna take a minute. So I'm just gonna go nice and fast for you guys. I'll be right back. So here we are again, boom, command I to invert. And um, actually, if I go back, you can already see how much darker this frame was because you see all these holes punched through. Let me just go ahead and reverse engineer this. And this might seem more complicated than it is, but basically I'm just gonna bring the brightness of this up. And just like that, you can already see what a difference that made. So now when I invert this, I won't have to paint around every little edge. Wow, these guys can just get out of here. I'll tell you that right now. They're gonna block the logo. Cardinal sin in product photography, never block the logo. Ugh. There's one thing that you need to know if you wanna shoot product photography, and that thing is there can never be enough logos. Most brands would be sad to admit that, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, let's see. So now we got a lot of sprinkles on this side, guys. Let's just get rid of some of these guys because there's too many. There's like a lot of green ones up here. Um, there's just a lot of action in the middle here. Maybe one of these green guys can go. Um, there's just a lot of yellow going on here. It's just a lot going on, period. Uh, not mad at them raining down here. It's kind of nice, right? Looks believable. Um, let's see. Maybe there's too much here. I can get rid of that. Let me just zoom right on in there. Whoa. Get rid of that little crumb. And this is a little too bright for these guys down here, so I gotta tighten that mask up, which is no big deal. You know, it's just. Again, a lot of this stuff is not hard to do. Most of it is time consuming. That's the big thing with retouching. Most of it, not difficult, just time consuming. And that's why most people have this stuff outsourced because you don't want to be sitting there retouching if you don't like retouching. I want to be taking pictures. I would rather do anything than retouch. I know I've made it pretty clear at this point that I don't like retouching, but I'm just trying to explain you know, from my perspective, the whole issue. Um, there's a lot of white ones here. Let's clean that up. Just looks so busy, you know? You know what? And the last one, when I originally did it, I had these guys here. And you know what? They're gonna stay. Cause it, I think that little pop of red is nice. It gives it some more realism right behind the blade. So I'm gonna get in there and gonna make this, gonna make this live here. Now that's a picture because that feels a little more realistic with that in the way there. All right, cool. I kind of feel like that's it. Um, I know that seemed like a long time and a lot of work, but that's just, like I said, it's very time consuming. When you have all these little elements, if you, sh if you shot something like, you know, a cup falling through the air and no sprinkles, a cup is, or a mug is much easier to just clip out. It's just simpler edges it's not so detailed it's just a lot faster but this picture is really fun and i'm really glad i shot it i'm glad you guys can see the process and kind of see like what goes into it all let's save this puppy out and flatten it out and get it all done so just want to make sure everything's good to go here so i'm going to command s again just to make sure we're good and what i want to do now is i actually want to command shift s and i want to save as so I'm gonna add underscore, whoops. I'm gonna add underscore crop at the end. 
So now this is going to be a second file altogether. So if we do anything bad <laughs> on this one and we mess it up, we're going to still have the original one that we worked on. So what I want to do now is turn this off, this fake frame, and I'm going to go to the top layer and I'm going to press sh uh, command option shift and E. So that's going to basically stamp everything that's visible. That's why I turned the fake frame off because it didn't get included in the mix. So now if I turn all these other layers off, you still see everything that's there because it was stamped into one layer. So I'm going to hit command S again. And now I can crop. Oh wait, we still have our little guides here. So I don't even need that fake frame anymore. We can just crop right here. Boom. I'm going to hit return. Now I'm going to actually go to layer and then flatten the image. And I actually always, even though I've used Photoshop for like almost 20 years, I literally leave this up and I never click don't show again because it's like a little warning and it's just takes two seconds to click okay and to just check yourself before you for sure wreck yourself. <laughs> so I'm clicking okay, we're getting rid of that. And now I'm gonna hit command option I and I wanna make this um, 2000 pixels on the long side for Instagram. And I can get rid of those lines again. So now I'm gonna hit command option zero, makes it the full size of the image. And like command zero fills your frame, command option zero makes it 100%. Now I'm going to hit command shift S and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG and I'm going to make sure it's in this folder, which it is. And then I'm gonna just clean this file name up and just put like IG at the end for Instagram and then save that. I wanna max because Instagram will compress the, the life out of your images. And that's it, the picture's done. I'm really happy with it. It was really fun to shoot, like I said. It's cool to be able to do things that you couldn't do in real life, like making these donuts flow and making this knife flow. It just gives you some creative flexibility. It's fun to just do something a little different. You can shoot you know, flat lays from overhead. You can do that all day long, which I do a lot for work, but a lot of the stuff we do for work also involves floating items. This is just one way to do it. Like I said, this is an important thing to learn in Photoshop is what you can and cannot Photoshop out and remove. So that way you shoot it correctly for the post process. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you for bearing with me for however long this video is at this point. It's been a minute since I was able to get back to the old YouTube desk and make a video. So I'm a little rusty, but I'm gonna get back here. I'm gonna make some more videos. And like I said, drop a comment and let me know what you wanna see a video of, whether it's a tutorial shooting, something retouching, something, you know, an app, Capture One, whatever. And yeah, just let me know what you, uh, what you wanna see. So if you guys were able to get some value out of this tutorial, please like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. Follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again, peace.